Welcome back to Big Boy. Let's uh, let's get after it. Roll some dice, etc. So, uh, great campaigns. The American Civil War. You can tell that by the headliner title. It's the AIO module, and we're looking at the top of uh, turn two in essence. And I think, if I recall correctly, the Union received the first activation after we did the recovery phase and all the rest of it and did uh, random events. I'm a little unclear on the late rain and how late rain is applied as a random event. Uh, it, it, there's a couple of rules that are just not gelling with me. We'll work it out as we go along. Net of it is, we activated the union first. I was, uh, it took me a little while to kind of noodle through. Did I want to activate Sherman up here or McPherson down here. And the reason why I wanted to activate Sherman up here was so that I could move him down to this location and start trying to bring him into range of McPherson so that we can get rid of this uh, out of uh, cohesion marker, which I'm not 100% certain stays with these guys. Maybe it uh, gets a refresh every turn. I I'm not sure. And I don't know that being out of cohesion twice matters. But basically, it's been out of range of command, so that uh, it's a mechanism to slow down Sherman, in other words. So we activated Sherman, and as as the army leader, he can activate you know all the all the generals and units in his range, is my understanding. So we uh, had two divisions here where he was situated, and we have them both beginning to build uh, minor fortifications, which we'll continue to do over time. I did consider attacking uh, Johnston's force here, but it's in uh, underneath there. It's in a fort, super strong. That's got 13 factors in there. I think it's a 39 on defense. And while I have 50, nearly 50 points between this and this here, yeah, you know, it, it's kind of a low odds opportunity. And even if we could pull off a grand assault or something like that, it didn't feel like it was really worth it. So. The key here, assuming I make sure that I use wagons and supply correctly, cut this rail line. So we're going to move Sherman south. We've got two or three turns before we're like, we can't move through this little area here until turn four. But we certainly can begin pushing this way and trying to cut the line. Maybe take, you know, take Tilton, for instance. So who knows? <clears throat> we can't cross any of the river crossings to the right off screen. All the ferries, everything, everything's damaged and unavailable till turn four. So there's, there's, I think the best thing to do is to move Sherman down. So that's what we did. We moved Sherman down. Uh, the uh, Union then won the next activation. Uh, sorry, the Confederates won the next activation and they moved one uh, force. Uh, they only rolled a, a one. So they moved two, two movement points down the road to here, adjacent to Oster House, with the view that Hood and his forces, and I'm just, I'm just thinking that that might be a really bad idea because I've just exposed myself here. Check this out, all right? Um, by moving here, I, got, I had one, oh, which way did I go? One, two, three, four movement points. But look, uh, McPherson's next activation. Oh, I'm off screen, dang it, am I? No, I'm not. Uh, he could just waltz right into Rasaka and, and take Rasaka. So, <clears throat> good news is, it's the Rebels activation, and we have an entire three movement points, because I, I rolled earlier on and we add one to it, so it was a net of three. Or maybe that was a three and I had to add one, so let's call it three. So I'm going to, I'm gonna do this with her to go one, two, three to here, flip that to a fatigue two. Now, here's what becomes interesting. My intention was to try to attack into this hex here. So if I had not moved into here, I guess we could have, uh, you know, that would have been a Zoc to Zoc movement for McPherson to go around, but he could have gone around this way as well. So dangerous move. So we've got, we've got to kind of back off that idea there for the moment. Um, but my point in making the video was to say, hey, look, you know, it, it's cool that when I was back here with a fatigue one and I rolled up, rolled up the next movement, I only got three uh, movement points. So it really wasn't enough to make a decent sort of attack. So we, we, we don't want to be doing attacks unless they're optimal. 
and uh, that was not optimal. So that's part of the joy and interesting uh, sort of out of your control aspects that the, the Great Campaigns system brings to you. Now, I'm glad I, I made this video because I would have missed this, uh, this, this situation here altogether. And in fact, it potentially still causes some problems if, if they try and go around this way. So, <clears throat> so this may have been an ill-advised effort by Hood. He got a little aggressive there. McPherson has uh, just, just eight factors there. Still not enough to make a decent attack, even if I get, uh, you know, reduce this fatigue in the next turn. I'm trying to attack here with uh, force number, what is he? Force number four. I only have, yeah, I have uh, 19, so that's not good. We don't, we don't want to do that. And in fact, I need to leave these guys that are in a fort, so they would have stayed behind. So I only have 13 factors. So in fact, force four really is just one army and hood or one division and hood and we'll put that back there so that's probably what we would do there i think something like that and that's one of the great things about playing solo we can make adjustments on the fly and fix things as we see it so anyway i thought i'd share that with you we'll move on to the next activation we'll see who gets it and we'll go from there talk to you soon